In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, we are going to discuss some mid-major sleepers who you may hear about around draft time. Stay tuned. Happy Friday and big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to and faster. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NBA. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies, and my co-host, Mr. Mavs Draft, Richard Stamen, just watched a crazy Mavs versus Lakers game, which I think he's pretty happy with the outcome. And when I think about the Mavs roster, I live in Dallas also, you always think about, like, what guy could come in and fit? Who could be a sleeper and the Mavericks don't have a first round pick and it's a team that has done well with guys that are like undrafted, you know, from Dorian Finney Smith to Maxi Cleaver. They've done well with some second round picks. Jalen Brunson was, was, I mean, they got great value out of him. I think Jaden Hardy is going to be good. So who else, but to have on to talk about some potential sleepers that are coming from mid major schools or guys that you, you may not hear about that could possibly be the next Dorian Finney-Smith and Mr. Mavs draft. So, Richard, what's going on? Yeah, I'm amped from that game. So no better uh, no better time than now, though, especially we just saw I, – I mean, I don't know about you, but I think that's the most viral I've ever seen, uh, let alone a player from North Dakota go. But, like, any deep main, mid-major prospect ever go viral for – uh, from what we saw with Grant Nelson, because for those who didn't see it, uh, one of, I think both of us follow this guy, KJ Media. He'll post about a lot of people. So I've seen him post about like the most random people. I've seen him post about like an army freshman or something, but you know, he he sees everything and he posted about this guy, Grant Nelson from North Dakota City. He's a 6'11", great athlete, potential three-level scorer. Um, and it blew up. I mean, NBA teams have taken note of all of it. I mean, we saw, I, I can't remember who put it. I think it was like Frankie vision or something put it out there. NBA teams are now going to see North Dakota state play just to see this one guy play. So it's pretty wild. Yeah. I, um, man, when it first went viral, I want to say it was like eight o'clock. What's today? It's Friday, maybe Tuesday morning or something like that. And I just kept getting all these calls. Actually, I saw the video on Instagram. I just scrolled through it and I scrolled through it. Then I kept getting these calls and messages from NBA teams. I actually wrote an article on it on NBA Big Board. Um, basically, I titled it, Who is Grant Nelson? And I had a team call me today and they're just like asking me, Do I know about him? You can't find his age anywhere. So I've heard that he's he's 20. Um, the, the question that NBA scouts were, were asking me is, and I'm like, I don't know, I haven't seen him, but everybody wants to know, is he a legitimate six eleven, And they want to know how old he is. And because he's kind of come out of nowhere. There are some people that had heard of him and, but that was because they watched him in the Arkansas game. They played Arkansas. I want to say their first game of the year. And so everybody was paying attention to Anthony Black. They was hoping Nick Smith would play and, and that team. So he did have a pretty decent game there. And then he had a game against Kansas, didn't really stand out. Another game against New Mexico State. And those are like his best opponents. But now, I mean, he's totally blown up. And it's just crazy. You can just see like the power of social media. And so what I've been hearing is nobody wants to go to North Dakota. So when they play Oral Roberts coming up, that's a game that you're probably going to see a lot of different NBA scouts at. What are your thoughts on his on his game and his potential and his draft range? Yeah, I think now he's definitely in the conversation to get drafted. I think the potential is there. Um, the big test for him is just shooting efficiency. You know, his shooting numbers have gone backwards over the years. Um, I don't have the stats pulled up, but I, I will pull them up as I'm talking. 35 numbers... as a freshman, 32 as a yep. sophomore, 21 as a junior. Yeah, and those, that number will go up because I know he had a good game tonight, but he didn't make it's a three still today, highly think. disappointing, though. So, 
And and the other thing that I saw is someone else put this out there. North Dakota State is six. Uh, did they, I can't remember if they won tonight, but I mean, regardless, they're under 500. When was the last time a mid-major, like deep mid-major, I'm not talking the American Athletic or something like Summit League, under 500 player made it to the NBA, like stuck in the league and got like a real multiple year guaranteed contract because it, it's almost unprecedented. And that's like a massive hurdle he has to overcome. Like he would be an historic first for it. Yeah, I mean, Patrick Baldwin Jr. I don't know if you call that, but he was a first round pick. Yeah, that's the closest one, right? Yeah. He wasn't even like, he barely played too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the it's it's definitely something that you, you have to factor in. I know uh, the people at Pivot Analysis, they probably have very good, very good data. And they were saying that his on and off splits are really, really bad. Like the team is actually better with him off the floor, which is very interesting. But I mean, he has to be thankful that he now has this buzz that, that KJ gave him. And, and now uh, he's definitely a social media favorite. He does have some intriguing skills. I mean, at 6'11", he moves like a natural wing. You know, we always hear about these guys that, oh, he was a guard and then all of a sudden he blew up. Some guys, they look like they, you know, they they look like they had some wing skills or whatever, at least how they move. But he, I mean, he doesn't look like he lost any like coordination or athleticism or anything like that. And then he's actually strong. Usually when you see that, it's like this really real thin guy. I'm thinking of someone built like Baba Miller, who was very thin. Um, but even with Anthony Davis, that was all they talked about his freshman year college. Oh, he used to be a guard. I didn't really see a lot of guard skills from him. I just saw like a great motor. Um, but even then he was real thin, but Nelson, he's he's got some he he's he's pretty strong. Do you think that like what do you what do you think is the best outcome for him? Do you think he'd have to go to the combine and 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 showcase what he does, or do you think that he is is it is it it's in his best interest to try to transfer up? Because I talked to a scout and he was like, the three point shooting is concerning. And they like, he just need an exact words where he needs to get the hell out of North Dakota State. <laughs> I mean, both, honestly, we've seen it before where players enter both the draft and the transfer portal, enter the draft, go to the combine, keep the options open. I mean, this should no matter what be his last year in North Dakota State. He's now, from this one week alone, he's now too big for North Dakota State. Uh, more literally the, the actual state. And I think for him, it's just be great at the combine. That's like a best case scenario. Worst case scenario is, eh, you know, he underwhelms in the combine kind of in the same way Max Amos did. Can he come back and maybe just do better than Max did? Uh, that's it, the the difference though is Max, I think was a sophomore, Grant's a junior. Again, nobody knows about this guy's age too much. He might end up being a year old for his class for all we know. There's a lot to hurt him in this process. I think the best case scenario is all these personal slash intangible intangible stuff. They turn out positive and he does well, at least holds his own at the combine. So I want to ask you about that. Like Blake, or I'm sorry, Baylor Shireman, who South Dakota State, he averaged like 16, 8, and 4 last year, South Dakota State, shot 50% from the floor, 47% from three. And he goes to Creighton, plays up a level. The number, the drop-off isn't bad. He's down at 13 points, but his field goal percentage has dropped from 50 to 44. The three-point percentage has dropped from 46 to 38. Do you think, like, transferring has hurt or helped Baylor? I mean, I personally, like, to be perfectly blunt, I never had him as somebody I would have ever drafted. I thought he was always kind of a two-way summer league ceiling guy. I think it's a little bit different with Grant Nelson, but for Baylor, I think it's definitely hurt him. I, I, I'm just a firm believer of go out as high as you can. Could it have gotten – was there ever a path where he gets better than 46 47% from three? I mean, he was almost 50-40-90 at Baylor – or not Baylor <laughs> – at uh, South Dakota State last year. And, like, the 80% free throw was the only thing holding him back. Still, 50-40-80 is an exclusive club. Like, Desmond Bain did that at TCU 
I think he should have come out again. I have concerns though. That shot just did not look like something that NBA teams are going to struggle to defend, but I do think he made a mistake transferring up. Yep. All right. Is there anyone else that you feel like is a mid-major guy that has a chance to sneak into the second round? I think, you know, the Atlantic 10 is one of the best mid-major conferences Yep. But I think the most realistic second round prospect out there is Tyler Burden from Richmond. He's somebody who, if you remember, I, I love Jacob Gilliard last year yep. at uh, at Richmond. They're teammates. And as a senior, Tyler Burden has been given the keys to the offense since Gilliard's gone. And Gilliard was like an all-time player there. And he's done really well. His efficiency has somehow gone up being more on ball. Uh, that's both overall and three point percentage. He's taking more off the dribble shots, taking just tougher shots. I would say because teams are so to- focused on him, and he's still averaging twenty points a game on forty seven percent, thirty seven percent from three. The free throw percentage has dropped, but I trust the career presented percentage, even though it's a little bit lower than that. At seventy two last year, same attempts per game, it was seventy nine. For those career seventy seven, I think he's a guy. I mean, his athleticism, he's a little bit stiff, but he still is a good athlete. And I think he can hold his own on the defensive end enough that his three-point shooting, if it translates, he nets out positive in the right situation. Yep. When we return, I want to share my my thoughts on Tyler Bird. He is someone that I had on my or in my draft guide coming into the season. But I want to talk to the audience and the small business owners about the benefits of LinkedIn jobs. So if you're a small business owner or a hiring manager, you know that your success in 2023 depends on the team members that you surround yourself with. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. So LinkedIn Jobs will help you quickly attract the qualified candidates to your open jobs with their targeting tools. They go beyond just the resume data by using insights from your job posts, And they have 875 million member profiles that you can put in front of, you can put your your post in front of their qualified candidates. So LinkedIn Jobs will identify the most qualified candidates to connect you with, and they can do it fast and for free. It makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your qualifications all on one platform. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to. And faster, so post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, once again, you are listening to the Locked on NBA Big Board podcast. I am your host, Rafael Barlow. We got my guy, Richard Stamen. If you've been following Richard on Twitter, you need to move over and follow him on Instagram. He is posting video clips. I don't know if he got scared with the whole Elon Musk thing and decided to move over to IG, but he's posting videos there. And a lot of the guys that he's posting the videos on are mid-major guys or guys that you're just not hearing about in, in the mainstream. And when we left off, we talked about Tyler Burton from Richmond. I actually like Burton. I think that he has a good chance to to be a guy, even if he's not drafted, but he seems like a guy that I think could stick. He's six, seven strong frame. I think he's a decent athlete. I like his first step. He's not vertically explosive. Um, he, he can make plays above the rim with the runway. <laughs> you know, um, if he's in transition, he, you know, he, he, I guess the best way to explain it is he's, he's not like super explosive vertically, but if he has a runway and, he he can make some athletic plays. He does attack closeouts on straight line drives. I think that's good. My favorite part about his game is I think he is like one of the, if not the best cutter in this class. Very intuitive cutter, knows when to cut, moves it out the ball. So I I look at him going to like Denver. He would thrive if 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 there was a path for playing time in Denver. But just having like a you know, a playmaker like Jokic or, or even like a guy like LeBron who does a good job at finding cutters, I think he would thrive in that system. So if you're Denver or the Lakers or you have a, a a guard that is good at finding cutters, Burton will make you will make you look good. He does have a little bit of 
shot creation in this game. He loves to to get to his reverse pivot. <laughs> but I, I think the biggest concerns are he is a streaky shooter, but he's a good free throw shooter and he's a good finisher at the rim. For you, like, what do you think his NBA role would be? I think you nailed it. I love that Denver fit. You look at somebody who is just an inside out off ball player and you just hope he's not a negative. And at the very minimum, you he's, you hope he's somebody you can just hide as guarding the fifth best player on the other team. I, I love everything you said. I mean, personally, for me, I think just a, an amazing outcome for him is just becoming a great shooter that can cut well, almost like this, this person's not a one-to-one comp, but like, uh, just a similar in the mold of this kind of players like Doug McDermott, right? You hope that that's what he can come out to be. I don't know if he's as good of a shooter personally, but just the overall or the overarching, just what he is. That's what I think a good outcome for him is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I talked to somebody about him earlier and, and their one complaint was they said for him to be such a good backdoor cutter, offensively there's like that's his biggest issue defensively is that he ball watches and he gets he gets beat um on on cuts and guys that move around all right we talked about grant nelson tyler burton is there anyone else that you think has a a chance to possibly get drafted you know i'm gonna i'm gonna go deep on this one i think this one's a small chance but given his nba pedigree and i think he'll be possibly the Mountain West player of the year. Um, I'm going to go with Jalen House. I, I've been absolutely blown away with what I've seen from him. He's somebody who started his career as an afterthought at Arizona State, transferred to New Mexico. I got to see him this year at SMU, and my goodness, bouncy, super bouncy at 6'1". That's his biggest downfall is his size. But the jump shot is very real. At the moment, he's shooting 44% from three. It is slightly an anomaly. Last year, he shot 32% from three on similar attempts, but the year before, 39%. Um, just limited sample size, but the free throw percentage has always cleared the 80s. And he's just an intelligent player. And in my opinion, he's one of the grittiest defenders in the entire country, just an absolute monster at forcing turnovers. He will get in every player's head. I think there's value to it. If you're looking like for an Alvarado, just looking at how good Jose Alvarado has been, it might get Jalen House drafted. And, And for those who don't know, that's the son of Eddie House, former NBA player. I didn't clarify that earlier. Mike's nephew, Mike Bibby's nephew. Wow. <laughs> yeah, tons of NBA. Yeah, <laughs> Mike, inch there. I, yeah, I'm almost certain that's Mike Bibby's nephew. Mike had told me told me about uh, him a couple summers ago. Cause yeah, I think they all live on the same street. I think Mike's I think Mike's sister is married to Eddie House. They 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 all live by each other in Phoenix. So do you and I saw you post this and I was, I was gonna bring it up. You think that he is this year's Alvarado? Now, for Alvarado, is he a guy that you missed out on in the, in the draft process a couple of years ago? <laughs> no, I don't know if this is a chance for me to just absolutely flex, but no, I actually had him top 60. Um, he was somebody who I, I ended up, granted, it was just in the hair of it. I had him 57th, but he was somebody who being, I want to say he was like, it was him or Moses Wright was the defensive player of the year for Georgia Tech or for the ACC at Georgia Tech. I just, there were too many things indicating Jose Alvarado would stick. The defense was great. Turnovers, I, like I'm repeating everything I said about Jalen House. The shot was real. The creation was great. Like, I just, I think there's room for these pests as long as they know how to play within themselves and not try and be there. Because like Jalen House is a star in college. He's not going to be a star in the NBA. But like, he can be a star in his role kind of thing. Yep. And I, if you can adapt to that, I think it's very simple actually to find those guys. Yeah, and it's always weird how those guys end up on, like, a good team, right? So, you know, with Alvarado, let, let's say he goes to Houston or, or, you know, one of these bad teams. Let's say he even goes to Orlando. Does he even play? But he goes to New Orleans, and, I mean, I didn't think he was going to play over Graham. <laughs> and now he's like, I mean, a rotation player for a team that is really, really good, especially if they get all their, you know, their pieces together and everybody healthy. But that was a huge win for David Griffin. I think that he was unfairly criticized and kind of labeled as a LeBron guy. But between him, Alvarado, Trey Murphy was a good pick. 
And Herb Jones, I thought he absolutely nailed nailed that draft. And then I like how, I mean, obviously Ingram and, and Zion, but I, I like the McCullum trade. And then I like how they they have a young team, but they still have some really solid vets around the team. And and then you know you get a guy undrafted that that ends up playing big minutes for you in the playoffs. I mean that's that's a win. That's all you can ask for as a general manager. Is there another player? All right, let's say we are now at the point where these guys may not be drafted. W- name a couple guys that are coming from mid-majors that you think could be two-way guys. Yeah, so let me ask, does the American Athletic Conference count as mid-major? Are we counting that or are we talking like obscure mid-major? Yeah, I, I would count it. I mean, it's cool. Houston. Who, who else? Yeah, I, I'm Memphis. not counting Houston on this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I mean it's not a power five, so cool. I, I I'll go with I. I'm just gonna go with the general answer, and I'm gonna give three guys, and I'm very, very much as is recency bias because I just saw this team last night. But there's three guys on Tulane that I really like. I saw them play against SMU, and um, not only in the warmups, I was just really impressed with the way, just the overall tools. I think warmups are a great way to see what physical tools guys have built just shot form. Everybody has to shoot. So you see it a little bit more up close athleticism. All these guys are doing crazy dunks, but like you really get to see the explosiveness. There were three guys that stood out for me. There's Jalen Forbes, who's somebody who I really liked after he transferred out of Alabama. He's a six, five wing kind of off guard, but he can score like crazy. His shot is very real. 37% 37% from three, 92% from the line this year. I mean, he just keeps putting in the work. He's also a menace on defense in terms of just, he will get turnovers like crazy. Then there's Jalen Cook, who this one's a little bit tougher. He's six foot. He also SEC transfer played at LSU one year, went to Tulane and became an absolute star, just a gifted scorer. Needs to work on just playmaking creation, I would say, or uh, consistency, I would say. A lot of turnovers at times. And then the last one, this is somebody who actually last night had the worst game of the three, but I really like Sion James. He is a 6'5 wing. I think he's actually a little bit bigger, has really long arms, is almost a jack of all trades. He's very efficient, shoots the ball well. I I really liked his jump shot. He's incredibly explosive, creates for others and plays defense. I think he's somebody who could emerge as a sleeper. And any of those three, I could see at least one of them sticking. Like Tulane has some guys on their team. And James is a stat stuffer. I like those guys that would get you four rebounds, four assists, and the shooting percentage isn't bad. That's that's a good one. He gets you two steals per game. That's, that's, That's a good eye for you. All right. When we return, we'll talk about some guys that could possibly end up being maybe summer league guys. But we have to talk to you about the number one source for betting info, stats, news, and analysis, and that is betonline.net. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season, which is over basketball. They got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. It is the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online is where the game starts. All right, last segment. And we're going to talk about some guys that Richard thinks could potentially be two way guys or even guys that could really make a name for themselves in summer league and possibly get invited to training camp. Who you got for me? Who, who's on your list? You know, I've kept an eye on this one player for a couple of years. He's out in the Mountain West. I feel like I just stick with the Mountain West. It's like with the, one of the best mid-majors. But uh, after watching his game last night, I was so impressed because he had 15 points, eight assists, five rebounds, and a steal on six of 11 shooting. And he's just somebody, given that he's 6'6", he's kind of a shooting guard, has good stats, stats another stat sheet stuffer. And that is Omari James out of South, uh, excuse me, San Jose state. I really thought he would have transferred by now, but he averages 15, five and five on 46% shooting overall 34% from three, but 75% from the line. I think he's almost guaranteed to get a summer league invite and, and stick from and have a chance to stick from there. I think he's really under the radar. He's just one of these wings that he can do a lot. And maybe some team can find something for him to find a niche role. What do you think would be like his 
skill set to hang his hat on. And that's the tough thing. I think being 6'6", if he was an inch or two taller, I would say it's just the offensive versatility, being able to score, also get rebounds and create. For others especially, I think that would be a really nice package. But unfortunately that he's 6'6", that's where his shortcoming is. Maybe he can make it work by being you know, hard-nosed on defense too. But if he's not great at defense, he might struggle to get past like a two-way contract. All right, who's next on your list? This one, so I've always been a fan of this person. Um, and, you know, I've I've kept in touch with this guy for a while, just keeping track of him. And that's Isaiah Crawford at Louisiana Tech. He's somebody who has always screamed, like, in terms of just the way he is built and kind of plays, like, just long arms. He's 6'7 with an over 7-foot wingspan. And that is Isaiah Crawford. I really like his game. He's actually looking healthy. He missed all of last year outside of three games to start yeah. the year with a knee injury. And he looks 100% again. I, I know he's been working on some, some tough turnaround jumpers and things like that to create a little bit more space. He's just a turnover machine on defense, like in the best ways. He's an absolute monster on defense. I think he can guard every single position. And on the year, he's averaging 13 points a game, five rebounds, two and a half assists, two and a half steals. That's on 53% shooting, 40% from three, 82% from the line. Like, there's a lot of good indicators there with him. What's crazy is it's just a crazy coincidence. When I moved to Dallas in 2004, I had this job, and I had mentioned to somebody that this is not what I want to do long term. I want to do basketball. And he says, I want to connect you with this guy named Kelvin Crawford. And that was Isaiah's dad. <laughs> so I used to do some basketball stuff at a after school program for his dad. And then his dad brought in like the real coach Carter from the movie. He brought him in to Fort Worth to speak to some kids. And uh, I want to say it was this past summer we did a podcast and I, I've been trying to keep up with him also. And I like really know him through his dad. And I, when I met him, he was a little kid. And then just to see, like, you know, what he's grown into now. And I felt like, like, I agree with everything you said. I felt like at the beginning of this year, he looked very hesitant. Like, he wasn't really fully confident. And, I mean, that's very natural, coming off off an injury. But he has slowly started to 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 gain his confidence, gain his rhythm. And he has the size, 6'6", 220, and he's shooting the ball well from three. So I, it's it's funny. We didn't talk about this before, but seeing him on on, on your list is it, uh, it's dope to me simply because he's a guy that not a lot of people are talking about that I was high on, but I felt like there was a little bit of a bias towards it because I, his dad is, like, such an awesome person, and I, you know, I, I've – just kind of seeing him grow up over the years, but yeah, I, I like him a lot. Now, if you were him, if you were advising him, what would be your, <laughs> what would be your, your move for coming up? Cause he was, you know, he was in the shadows of Kitty Lofton yep. before. And then unfortunately they didn't get to play a lot last year. Think about how good that team would have been if they would have been able to share the court together. They would have won the, the conference USA. <laughs> I think, they they They're did they actually, go to the finals or, or championship game? They or went to the finals. I think they lost. Now I'm now I'm fact checking myself out here. Because it was oh, in yeah. Frisco. And I want to say they Yeah, I, I think they went to the who who knows? No, oh, they lost to UAB in the uh in the final. But that's a perfect transition. What do you think about the UAB guards? I, I wanted to shout them out. I re, I mean, I love Eric Gaines. I, I think it's a shame he's not like 15 to 30 pounds heavier. But How much is he at now? Wasn't he like 150 <laughs> last year? I remember it being 160. So I was going off of that. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going off of that number, add another 10. But I really do like him. I think he's just very flashy in a good way, not just like a all flash and a substance thing. That's not him. Like he is a monster on defense. He knows how to use his size to his advantage. Um, I also am a sucker for undersized guards. He's only like 6'2". But I really like his game. And then there's Joey Walker, who is he still the leading scorer in the country? Like, I mean, that dude Last is fun. I looked, 10 threes yeah. a game. <laughs> he was that, attempting 10 threes a game. Look, I don't know how much he actually translates to the league, but there's a few things. One, he's he's got a bunch of uh, clout, which I think does matter with the NBA. I mean, somebody's going to give him that chance. 
but he's 5'11", and he's not going to be able to come off screens that many times. I'm interested to see how his game translates. He's also a fifth-year player, but he's too fun to – he's like 100% going to get a summer league invite this year. Yeah. Someone compared him to like a Patty Mills. A, a, That's a, a very Patty high Mills ceiling comparison. for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Gaines last year, I had him at a buck 50. I had him at 150 pounds. And he's listed at 165 this year. I mean, there are some people that feel like UAB has a top five backcourt in in the country. I'm one. Yeah, I, man, it's it's just not so maybe not top five. They're close. So who, who would be your who who's your number one? Oh man, you know I did this exercise with Leaf, and now I'm absolutely drawing a blank. Now that I'm put on the spot, let me. Well, I know let me one. Think about this for a yeah. You you do yours. It's the same. I know prior to the season, people thought North Carolina should have been number one, <laughs> and you know that that's that's a given. Who they had coming back. Um, Oh, obviously I, Baylor. Yeah, Baylor has a a good one. Um, Loki Xavier's up there. Yeah, yeah. You you can make a case and say there. I I love their I love their backcourt. Texas, we thought Texas, yep. and yeah, even Houston. though, Ty, yeah, even though Tyrese Hunter has. Oh man. I don't know if he made the best decision. And I had tweeted that, that like, why did he leave Iowa State? I had no idea Iowa State had so many fans. It's like, when, you never had like a tweet and it's like, like a conversation that goes on for like a week of people just <laughs> keep adding on to it. And everybody would say he left for the money. I mean, that was the constant thing. I just kept getting all these memes of money bags, yada, yada, yada. I don't, oh. I don't know if he made the right decision, the best basketball decision, but Texas's backcourt is really good. Wait, I haven't gotten in my obligatory Isaiah Wong comment. That's one of them. They haven't lived up to expectations. Isaiah has, but the, on paper, that is one of the best ones in Miami, too. Yeah. It's not top five, but I had to say his name. Like, you know, I, I feel like I'm at this point getting royalties every time I say Isaiah Wong. Isaiah Wong, Isaiah Wong, <laughs> Isaiah Wong. All right. Is there one more player that you feel like has a chance to to make a splash in whether it's summer league or as a two-way guy? So I'm going to go out of here and say somebody who it's going to be a minute till this guy's in the league because he's only a sophomore, but he is one of the best mid-major sophomores in the country right now. And that is Claudel Harris at Charleston Southern. I saw him play. I forget which high major team it was. It might have actually been Tulane now that I think about it. Um they played a good schedule, though, and he has absolutely killed it. He's at 18 points a game, four rebounds, two assists, one steal, 47.5% from the field, 31% from three, but 80% from the line on three and a half attempts a game. So I think there's enough shooting indicators. He has a beautiful jump shot. I really like him. I wish he was a little bit taller than 6'3", but 6'3 isn't you know six foot or something there's a lot of and if you're looking for these deep sleepers and you like you look at the conference scores almost all of them are going to be these like six foot six foot one guards yes he's kind of <laughs> close but he's really stood out i mean he's a, he's a sophomore i don't think he comes out this year but next year if he absolutely somehow explodes he could be a leading scorer in the country but does he transfer that's the thing now and that's, like you find yep. these guards that are good at these mid majors, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're at a power five, and that can, could definitely be an option for him. Can I change my answer then? Because this player cannot transfer. I'm interested. We already talked about Jelly Walker. I'm interested to see what happens with Darius McGee. Like, I think he's so fun. I think he gets a summer league invite. He's a fifth year player who is just an automatic bucket. He's five nine, shoots forty seven percent from the field, and ridiculous. Also on ten attempts a game. 46% from three, 80, 89% from the line. Like I'm interested to see what happens and someone will give him a chance this year in the summer league. So I don't know what's going to happen with him, but he's, I'll change my answer from Claudel to him. Yeah. I was looking a couple of days ago, who are the best shooters and I was trying to look for best wing shooters. And when you go down the list of all the best shooters in college basketball, <laughs> They're all between five nine and six one. <laughs> like if you find somebody six two, it's like, oh wow, <laughs> this guy, this guy's big. I mean, it's all I mean, they're all small guards that are just 
shooting at a ridiculous clip and they're not spot up shooters either. Like these dudes are shooting off the dribble. It's like, man, if the NBA was, they're just such a, they just anti small guards. That's, that's, that's what stinks for them. Antoine Davis. What do you, what's your thoughts on Antoine Davis? I, I wanted to say him. I feel like he's had a lot of uh, eyes on him. I think the scoring's nice. I, think he needs a year he's going to be a two-way guy uh, i'm very certain of that somebody will give him that contract honestly it'll probably be like the pistons or something <laughs> he needs a lot of run in the g league to polish his game for the nba because right now it's an entire system built for him which like a lot of players are it's not a knock but he has to adapt to playing a specific role more off ball things like that uh where it's just not about him and you know a lot of players have to go through that phase how will he adapt i don't know yeah he's a name that i've had circled to remember because I was with the the team API at the time we had Trayvon Duvall, Terrence Ferguson, Billy Preston. It was three McDonald's all Americans, Mark vital. I mean, it was like eight or nine guys on that team that played division one basketball. And Antoine was a freshman. He lit us up. I mean, like, and he went to like a homeschool in Houston. We never heard, heard of him. And I mean, he lit us up. And I'm not surprised to see him scoring at such a high clip. Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you, the listener, for making the Locked On NBA Big Board your first listen of the day. Locked On NBA Big Board podcast, your first listen of the day. Now, for your second listen, check out the Game to Game podcast. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on the Locked On NBA podcast. It is available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, this is Rafael Barlow with my co-host, Richard Stamen, Mr. Math Draft. And he covered some guys that may be on your favorite team summer league roster in the very near future. Once again, everybody have a great weekend, and we are out.